Welcome to AI to AE, where I take what you know about Adobe Illustrator and we transfer it into making things move and animate in Adobe After Effects. I am Corey Kerr, and today we are going to talk about Z Space. And so what we're going to do is we are going to talk about X and Y, which goes side to side and up and down. But Z Space, like these letter Zs, come towards or away from the camera. And so what you're going to see is you're going to see that we can move around in 3D space with 2D objects. And there's two different things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about separating things in Z space, and then we're going to talk about rotating things in Z space. I'll throw in a little bonus extra at the end of a 3D camera. But right now, um, let's jump in. And so let's come right over here. I'm going to take these six uh, different layers here. And I'm just gonna drag them in and you'll see that they are different numbers. And we are gonna move these around in this composition. Now, the first thing you'll notice is they seem like they're all kind of on the same in the same spot and they don't belong in this 3D space. And so what we need to do is we need to highlight all of them and then click on this cube, so you'll see that there's this cube up here. If you don't see this cube, you can go to toggle switches and modes at the very bottom of your timeline and it'll toggle back and forth, okay? So toggle that until you see this cube and then turn on your 3D layers. Now what that is going to do is that is going to cause, and I'll just show you one of these, you to have not only X and Y coordinates, but you now have a Z coordinate. And so I can move this further or closer, okay? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it kind of closer, like that. And so now, when we kind of move around in this uh, situation here, you can kind of see, and so if I come in here and I'll show you the camera in a minute, but if you take my point of interest and I kind of move it, you can kind of see we're a little bit in Z space now, okay? If I come around this way or this way, so let's, let's kind of move these around and we'll kind of separate what's going on. But before we do that, we need to change our view. So in your, in your preview window, I want you to change it from one view to four views. One view to four views. And what you'll, what you'll see there is that you've got top, active camera, and front. Okay, top, active camera, and front. And at this point in time, if you don't already have a 3D camera, you need to add a 3D camera. So go to Layer, New, Camera. Okay, Layer, new camera. That'll add a 3D camera and it'll look like this. Bring up this menu. Just choose 15 millimeter for right now. Don't worry about anything else and click OK. All right. So with that, that'll give you this active camera view. Okay. Now here on the right side, we are looking at what seems like lines. Okay. And on the top, we are looking at these lines. Okay. And this camera is this little triangle object. Okay. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to take each one of these, I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to hit P to kind of show uh, the position of each thing. And you'll notice that there's different, everything's zeroed out. But if I move this, then it moves it forward or back, okay? So I'm just going to spread these out here. I'm going to kind of move some of them forward and others back, and I'm just kind of changing the Z element that we have here that one way back. You can also, and I'm going to zoom in on this to show you, you can also see that as I hover over, there's a red, green, and blue thing. The, the, the green represents the y-axis, the red represents, represents the x-axis, and the z is represented by the blue uh, little triangle. So if I want to move these forward to back, I can do that, and I can also move them to the side. So I'm just going to kind of spread these numbers out a little bit. I'm going to move them around so that some of them are much closer and some of them are much further away from the camera. Okay, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to zoom out on this and let's grab this one. We'll move them to the side here. Okay, we'll grab this guy and we'll move him to the side here like this. Okay, and let's grab this one and I'm going to move it all the way to the back. Now yeah, we'll leave it at the front, that's fine. I just need to move this one. This number five here, we'll kind of move him around. Let's put him in the middle. Okay, so now we've got stuff. I'm gonna put him 
down. You notice how you can kind of disappear into that layer? All right, so let's move them over like this. Okay, so now if I move my camera, which I'll show you how to do that in a minute, I grab my camera here, and if I move it forward or back, you notice that things are separated out in Z-Space. So this is the first, this is the first main thing that you can do in um, 2.5D. 2.5D is 2D objects separated out in, in three dimensions. And if I look up and down, okay, or if I look left and right, you can kind of see how that works. Okay, things are kind of in a 3D space. And that's, that's mainly shown when we kind of move the camera forward and back into Z space. Okay. So that's that. So let's talk about the camera now. The camera has two main controls. It does a lot of different things, but I want you to pay attention to just two main things right now. One is the position of the camera, okay? The position of the camera, I'm gonna zoom in again, okay? Uh, the position of the camera is controlled by this X, Y, and Z that is in the back of the camera. And I want you to think of the position of the camera as if you're thinking of the uh, tripod of a camera. You can pick that tripod up and you can move it into different areas of a room or different areas of a scene and it moves that tripod. The second part is the point of interest and that is controlled by this little line and ball here and you'll notice that the position of the camera does not change but where I point my point of interest it changes where the camera is looking. And So consider that to be like the tripod head. Right, if I were to look at the tripod head, I can move the tripod around with the position, okay? But then I can move the camera of where the camera is focusing on, or the point of interest of the camera, with the tripod head. So it's much like our own head and our own body, right? If I were to change my position, I would use my legs to walk somewhere else in the room. And if I change my uh, point of interest, then I would look at different places in the room. Now, one, one little trick that I like to do with the point of interest here is I like to parent it to a null object and that's because it can become kind of confusing if you're moving the camera around and the position is changing uh, with when you move the camera it also changes uh, your point of interest right because if I pick the tripod up and move it the camera doesn't automatically continue focusing on the same thing and so if I want it to do that, which in this case I do, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Null Object. Layer, New, Null Object. Okay, and then I'm going to hit P on my Null Object, and I'm going to turn this into a 3D Null Object by clicking on that. And a Null Object, if you don't know what that is, is, is a nothing. It is, it is something that won't render, it doesn't show up, it's invisible, but it has properties and you can use it to control other things and you can parent things to it like I'm going to now. So I'm going to open up my camera controls and I'm going to take my point of interest because I have this pick whip right here, property pick whip, and I can hold this and drag it to the position of this null object. Okay, and now that you notice it jump, wherever this null object goes, okay, the camera goes. And that can be really helpful because of the following. When I move the position here, and I can turn on anything, anything that has a stopwatch next to it can be animated over time. And so I can come in here like this, and let's go like one second, and I'm going to move this backwards, and I'm going to move it sideways. You'll notice that as I move it sideways, it continues to focus on where it was focusing before. So then I'm gonna move my playhead again, and I'm going to move my camera here out, I'll move it forward, okay, and so I can just kind of move this around and what it is doing is it's continuing to focus on that null object. And so if I want to animate my null object, I can also do that. I'm going to bring this back, I'm going to turn position on, animation on position, I'll leave it so it doesn't move really here, and then on, on at two seconds, I'm gonna start having the null object kind of move back and down like that. And so as this camera flies through 3D space, you can see that the null object is controlling where it is looking and the position of the camera is controlled by these keyframes here. 
So those are those are kind of the main interesting things that you can do. Now, with this one, I'm going to take the number two here, and I'm gonna show you a couple more things that you can do. If you hit R, that'll give you rotation. And you'll notice that instead of just having one point of rotation, you now actually have X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation. And each one of those is going to rotate along the axis X, Y, or Z. And so when I click X rotation here, you can see that it is rotating forward along the horizontal axis, okay? So that's what I'm gonna have this one do. I'm gonna take this to zero, and then I'm gonna turn this on, and then for a few seconds here, let's go to five seconds, I'm going to have it rotate five times. And so it will now continue to spin forward along that x-axis, okay? Then, let's do another one. Let's take this one, the number three here. And I'm gonna select that, and I'm gonna hit R to reveal my rotation. Now let's see what happens with the y-axis. The y-axis will spin it along a vertical axis, the y-axis, and so it spins um, this direction along the y-axis, okay? So I'm gonna take this back down to zero, I'm going to take this to zero, and I'm going to turn this on, jump this to five seconds here, and I'm going to have it rotate five times as well. And so now we have the number two rotating that way and the number three rotating that way. And so let's see what happens along the z-axis. Now the z-axis is going to be kind of interesting, so I'm going to grab the next number that we've got here. I'm going to hit R and the Z rotation is going to rotate along the Z axis. And remember that the Z axis is coming directly at you, the viewer, right? Towards the camera and away from the camera. And so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go zero this out, start this up, bring this over to five, and I'm gonna make this rotate five times. And now, as we fly through space, you will see that we have different things rotating along different axes, and we have our camera moving in 3D space. And so it kind of stops, and I'm gonna push through here. So I'm gonna get past, past here, and I'm gonna go to four, okay? And I'm gonna bring the camera back. And so I'm gonna grab our camera position. That'll kind of light the camera up. Now I like to use both top and right. Um, and I'm just gonna take this one, and I'm gonna make it right. So I'm gonna change this to right. Okay, and now I can kind of see both of those. Okay, so position here, and I'm gonna straighten it out, so I'm gonna move it along the x-axis. Okay, and then I'm going to move it forward along the z-axis through everything, like that. And you see that we're moving through space, but it flipped around. Now the reason it flipped around is I passed the point of interest. And so it kind of flips around. So I can go like this, and if I want to keep going, I need to also animate my point of interest. So I'm going to take this null object, I'm going to hit P for position, and we're fine about right to there. And so right here, we're, we're starting to kind of flip around. So I'm just going to add a keyframe right there by clicking on this little diamond. Hit J, you can jump back and forth between J and K. And then I'm going to just push this back. So I'm just going to grab the z-axis and just push this way, way in the back there. And now as we go, we can kind of see that we can kind of fly through all of this z-space. Okay? And if you want this to loop, I always enjoy things that loop. I'm going to make sure that my last frame is the same as my first frame. So I'm going to copy and paste my first frame to the end. And I'm going to copy this one and paste it to the end. And then you will see that as we play through this, it will continually loop. And so those are the three main things that you need to understand, 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 you need to understand it. You need to understand when you're working in Z space. One is separating things out in Z space, the position of Z space, pulling things apart. Much like I did right here when we have Z kind of flying around the screen, you can see that it's, it's pulled apart in Z space. That's position, okay? The other thing that I'd like you to focus on is being able to understand how things rotate. And so if we come back um, over here, 
um, and jump into this, you can see that I have, I'm gonna just turn on from four views to one view. You can watch the two, the three, the four, and they are rotating um, in three dimensions, okay? You can also, actually I'm gonna do this right now because this is kind of cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the five here and I'm gonna show you that you can have it rotate in more than just that. And so if this, is this the five? That is the five. I click on this, I'm gonna hit R. And then instead of having this be, um, instead of having this be a, a fixed position, I'm gonna turn on wiggle expression. If you don't know what that is, go back to the AI to AE playlist on my YouTube channel and you can kind of see what that is. I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna go wiggle, to spell it right or it doesn't count. Open and close parentheses. I want this to happen two times a second and I want it to happen for 250 degrees, okay? And then I'm gonna grab that like this and I'm gonna copy it over here. I'll click on there, paste. I'll click again and paste. Okay, and now what you will see is that five is not only rotating along one of those axes, it is rotating along all of those axes and it is doing it randomly. And so the cool thing about it doing it randomly is that, um, man, that camera's moving around a lot. Where are we at, where are we at, there we go. So um, is it kind of it's kind of like one of those gyroscope balls that the uh, astronauts train in as it rotates along an X, a Y, and a Z axis, and so it has all three points of position. So once you are able to do this, you are able to kind of do whatever you want um, in two-dimensional space uh, and transfer that two-dimensional space into 3D space, and that is called 2.5D. Okay, as always, if you would like to check my stuff out. You can go to coreykerr.com and I've got stuff up there. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, ring it in that bell so you get notifications. And you can also, um, if you like these videos, it's super helpful if you share them. And so if this was helpful to you, go ahead and share that on Twitter and Reddit and I don't know, tattoo it on the back of your forehead so you see it every morning in the mirror, whatever it is. Anyway, we will catch you guys later. I'm out.